Alright, what's going on you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Stock Talk, a series I make whenever I feel it's necessary where we cover some exciting news and price action in regard to some of the stocks we've been talking about on the channel. In today's case, you already know what we're covering, not only because it's in the title, that's definitely a reason for sure, but because I imagine a lot of you saw some gains today with this one, so we will cover Sorrento from both technical and fundamental perspective. In regard to news, we are only covering uh, a Sorrento article and a Moderna article, so gun actually not even an article on Moderna, I just want to talk to you about the earnings that's coming up with Moderna tomorrow. So we will kick it off with Sorrento up 31% today up. Uh, I will show you guys the after hours, but it's up about 8% after hours. Um, so amazing day for Sorrento. I'll let you guys know what I'm thinking in regard to future price action and what I'm doing as of right now, what I'm thinking. And then again, we will go down the line here on the watch list. Sorrento kick it off Moderna, Innovio, Novax and Vaxart. I'm not going to cover some of the other plays today. These are the ones I'm choosing to cover today. Um, Vaxart. In Novax, I honestly am not invested in these anymore. I just want to preface this by saying that. But um, I know we have talked about them a lot in the past, and I just want to give you guys an update in regard to what I'm seeing on the chart at least, okay? So before we do get into this, I will ask you guys to please give the video a like if you do want to gain value from it, or if you're invested in any of the stocks we're talking about today, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter first link in the description if you're interested in more real-time updates and trades from myself. Okay, so let's kick this thing off. Sorrento, again, up 31% today. Um, we will cover this article first, always touch on the fundamentals, and then we'll get technical. Okay, so why Sorrento Therapeutic stock stock, uh, stock soared today? Molly Fool article by Joe T. What happened? Shares of Sorrento Therapeutics rocketed 31% higher on Tuesday, even more, following bullish comments from a respected analyst. So again, you guys always say this, but I'll say it again. Um, analyst, remember you guys, and, and again, Analysts, this is their job, okay? It's their job to study stocks and, and break down stocks, financials, etc. cetera. Um, so it does, it does hold weight. But remember, uh, analysts can't always hold some biases. Analysts are people too, and people um, are biased, are biased. Uh, humans are biased uh, beings, okay? So just remember that. Uh, but again, respected analysts, always good. H.C. Wainwright, analyst, oh man, that's tough, reiterated his buy rating on Sorrento's stock and boosted his target price from 24 to $30. Okay, so that still leaves a lot of room for growth. Again, his, his time horizon is probably a little longer, but um, that's that's great news uh, on a long-term time frame at least. His new target represents potential gains for investors of more than 133% based on Tuesday's closing price of $12.84. Um, S said that he's intrigued by the potential of a new uh, a new rapid diagnostic test that Sorrento recently licensed from Columbia University that re that can reportedly detect SARS-CoV-2 virus in as little as 30 minutes using saliva samples rather than unpleasant nasal swabs. Get you guys... I have taken the nasal swab test. It is awful. Okay, so for that reason, I, I, uh, from a matter of principle, back Sorrento fundamentally that much more. That test sucks, you guys. Let me know down in the comments if any of you have taken it so we can just cry about it together. Okay, so uh, S also appreciates uh, that Columbia's test, the COVID trace, requires no specialized laboratory equipment, which should make it easy to use in a variety of settings. We believe that the incentive to facilitate the large scale and uh, indeed ubiquitous deployment of the COVID trace test is extremely high, and governments worldwide may seek to implement this in their respective regions. Okay, so again, you guys, we've been talking about this a lot. We have covered this more specifically, but COVID trace is, if, if Sorrento can successfully execute on this test kit, that's absolutely huge okay so remember they're also working on they're working on a test kit and a treatment okay so unlike the vaccine companies which are all the other stocks we're covering today uh, Sorrento is taking a multi-pronged approach and that's why I've liked Sorrento from the beginning for the past few months that's why we've been talking about it so much is because Sorrento is taking the the multi-pronged approach okay they're taking multiple different stabs at this problem that is COVID okay so again they're not really competing for the vaccine. They're, they, I think they're trying to develop something, but it's that's a, that's irrelevant in my mind, uh, at, at least my, personally for me. Um, but the, the test kits and the treatments is more realistic, especially on a short-term time horizon, on a short-term basis. Um, it's very likely that these will be established prior to a vaccine, although the vaccines are coming quick, is like faster than ever historically, at least. Uh, at least that's uh, allegedly the case. But I mean, test kits, treatments, it just makes more sense intuitively that these would come prior to a vaccine. So that's why I'm super fundamentally bullish on Sorrento. Let's get into the technicals. So, okay, you guys, if you've been keeping up, you, I've been preaching the Sorrento 14 for the past couple weeks now. I think. Um, I mean, time is flying right now. We're we've been we've been on a roll lately. Super grateful for 
for just the role we've been on lately. So congrats to you guys if uh, you've been here with me. It feels really good to share these experiences with you guys, especially days like like three for three on the Sunday stock watch this week. So it feels good. Uh, I do want to re remind you guys that I've been wrong many times in the past. Um, again, been on fire lately. You do see these times like these, but uh, I want you guys to remember and it, remember this about any any person you ever watch and even about yourself if you're ever feeling cocky because it's easy to feel cocky when you're um, when you're on a hot streak but just keep in mind you guys i've been wrong stay humble and um just stay objective try to stay rational do your best to stay rational even if you're stoked obviously celebrate but uh, do your best to stay rational and uh don't get cocky and and stay as humble as you possibly can okay even though it might be hard all right so again preach in sorrento 14 dollars for a while we will here i want to show you guys the um damn it my face is right in the way hold on let me move my face real quick Skip. all right so i do want to show you guys the after hours extended hours trading and then I'll move myself down there. Probably gonna have to take that away after. So let's move back down there. Okay, so extended hours trading. You can see that extended hours trading, we actually came up and almost touched like almost exactly the line that I've had drawn for, again, a couple weeks now, almost at $14. I believe Sorrento closed, it's like at 1385 or something right now. I wish, I don't know why it's not showing right here. Sorry about that. But it's at about like 1385 again, or 1384, sorry, right there, it says right there, duh. But, Again, almost touching that $14 line. So hashtag Sorrento14 is really coming to fruition. Um, I will be honest with you guys today. So today, I'll zoom in a little bit here. So let's zoom in to like the five minutes. I'll show you guys kind of what I did today just to uh, just to show you guys an example of how I kind of approach days like today. Okay, so um, this was, and again, you guys always remember around, I'm putting this in Hawaii time. So I'm sorry, you guys are gonna have to gauge that in whatever time. Uh, whatever time zone you're in. I use Hawaii time. So around around this time, around like 7.30 to 8.30 uh, Hawaii time. Again, it, it fluctuates a little bit. It was 8.30 in this in this situation. But just an hour and a half, hour and a half, two hours prior to market close is easy, way easier. I, that's how I should have said it initially. So hour and a half, two hours prior to market close, you always see uh, either a pullback or a significant move up, uh, depending on whether the stock is trending significantly up or down so if it's going significantly up like sorrento it's likely that you'll see a dip around that time again you guys it doesn't happen every time but it happens enough for me to feel confident telling you guys this all right so that's when i usually do trades if i ever do day trades it's rare that i day trade but i, I just saw the opportunity here so i did sell a decent amount around this area i knew it was going to pull back because again you guys it, it it's very likely that it, it will do this if you see a significant price action like this so pulled back i did pick up a few more shares probably around like the 1150 region so didn't catch the bottom but still gained and um, i do want to let you guys know i took some solid profits off sorrento today um, this could have been a terrible play on my part i still gained i still had a very solid day today very thankful but um the fact that it's up almost 10 percent after hours could mean that it's gonna have a solid day tomorrow and uh i might i might have messed up there but you guys that's all right that's the game that's that's just how it crumbles sometimes but uh, the reason I did that is because I still believe that we'll see a dip in Sorrento, especially even honestly, because we saw this move up after hours. Um, so you see this after hours movement. And again, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see it just because this is the line of uh, this has been the line of resistance. This has been my price target for a long time now. So uh, we will see if uh, if I'm correct here, if we do see a pullback once it touches $14. Again, the fundamentals are so strong with Sorrento right now. You see a lot of volume here. Um, fundamentals are strong. So it could very well continue ripping and the after hours price action could be a testament to that. But I, um, I'm personally thinking that we'll probably see a pullback and it wouldn't surprise me to see a pullback down to this, this like the 1250 region almost. It spent a lot of time around here, um, just a few days ago before this, or actually, no, 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 sorry. Just, I, this is crazy that this is today. Okay. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a pullback at least to, to this region. And, uh, if that happens, I'll definitely pick up some more shares. Um, if we zoom out a little bit, okay, let's let's zoom out to, to a longer time horizon just to sh get some scale of this. Let's definitely, okay, I told you guys I would have to turn this back off. Okay, so let's, sorry, boom. Let's take that off because that looks irritating. Okay, so let's zoom in a little more here, or not zoom in, zoom out a little more here. So again, it's, 
it's uh the 14 again this this went way quicker than i thought i didn't think it would pop this fast but again that analyst uh that analyst rating that analyst take did skyrocket the stock from a fundamental perspective fundamentals great fundamentals always wipe out technical technicals you guys always remember that i've always, I, I do say this all the time but I, i'll do like 70 30 80 20 most of the time fundamentals to technicals okay but technicals deals do still play a role in my mind so um Again, they're they're important to look at in this market too. There's a lot of traders in this market, so it does it might be more 70 30 right now in this current market. But anyway, I've been following this lot like again this huge, this just huge upward pattern. All right, and it broke straight out of, of this upward line of uh, of support. So it would also make sense to see it start to use this trend in a sense as kind of a point of of support so we'll see if it does use this trend line as a point of support um, it did bounce off it right there uh just at some point today so it is it is kind of shaping up to look like it will use this uh this line as a line of support so again if it pulls back to 1250 again i will definitely be picking up more shares um on on the greater scale it would it would also kind of make sense if it does continue to pull back we'll have to see how moderna's earnings go tomorrow because i think that will um, definitely uh definitely kind of dictates some sense of consumer or investor sentiment in the morning. So we'll have to see how Moderna's earnings play out. Because um, again, that will just kind of dictate price action for the sector, in my opinion, at least. I think that'll definitely rub off at least a little bit. So if if it does choose to pull back significantly, I want to be surprised to see it as well come down to this area where we did see it test down. It makes sense that it bounced, bounced off right here, um, right around like the Tain 60 level yesterday right around the point where it set this previous high at the at the very end of July and July 31st. So we might see a retest back down to that area. It does also coincide uh, with the 21 EMA as well. So that wouldn't completely surprise me. If that happens, I will definitely be picking up more if it drops. Um, to be honest, if it drops below $11, I'm, for, I'm picking up, I'm, I'm definitely securing a big old bag after that. So that could very well happen again. It's, it's I, I do think the Moderna's earnings will play a factor in this, and we've seen such a run up. It did touch, it just touched fourteen dollars, which was my price target. Um, and if we do like Mara, which we've been talking about a lot, if we see the same thing happen with what Mara happened today, because Mara pulled back, and again, you guys, it's just kind of translating the same psychological patterns throughout bubbly stocks like this okay so through hype stocks hot stocks um you see a big move up we've been waiting for the breakout finally breaks out um if it follows the mars trajectory we'll see like a 10 percent retracement tomorrow just because it had such a great day today if that happens definitely picking up more but i do believe we could we will probably see a retracement at some point in the next few days could be completely wrong here but um that is what I'm betting on. And again, if we do see uh, like 10, 15, 20, definitely 20% retracement, um, I'm securing it back. Okay, so we'll call it there with Sorrento long term, you guys. I mean, uh, long term, I don't even, long term is, is, I would agree with the guy, like 30 to 40 bucks per share is not, is not out of, uh, is not out of the cards for for me as, at all especially considering the fundamentals are so strong so i definitely think we could uh, over the course of the year definitely see a, a 30 to 40 dollars to rento okay so long term very bullish short term think we can see a pullback we'll pick up more if that's the case let's move on so i was talking about that for a long time very excited about that one though we've been i mean i'm so happy to finally see sorrento break out they've been they deserve it man okay so moderna is is just been capitulating it's just been going sideways for so long now okay so let's zoom out to look at this real i mean these i've had these lines drawn for so freaking long now so moderna is still just following this upward this nice upward tra like trajectory so it's still bouncing around this area this kind of middle line of resistance which it is uh using as resistance and this lower line of support so i i really am confident in the fact that it, it it, it's very unlikely even if tomorrow's earnings aren't that good i doubt it'll break down this line of support but um i do want to talk to you guys about moderna's earnings which are tomorrow morning um they're coming up very soon so keep an eye out for that but i want to show you guys just quickly their previous earnings just to use uh some historical data as a as a frame of reference okay so you can see here uh this is this light okay so this what i want to establish right off the bat here sorry i'm trying to think about how to uh, articulate this what you see right off the bat here, these darker lines are analyst estimates, okay? So that's expected earnings per share. And then this light kind of teal, teal line is is their actual earnings per share, per share. And you can see this is all negative, okay? So Moderna is not profitable. That's something very important to establish, which uh, uh, unfortunately, again, I've, I've ripped on this a lot. Financials don't matter all that much 
in this current market okay that's just the reality i don't agree with it i don't disagree with it you just have to adapt and that's the reality of the current markets financials don't matter much what matters is progress as a company and future potential okay so obviously moderna the leader in uh developing covid vaccine they're initiating phase three allegedly they could uh release data on that in regard to that as soon as october so very soon there um but what i see here and we'll, we'll move down here okay so you can see uh consensus eps forecast so this analyst estimates this is like what uh what analysts estimate to be their earnings per share and then their actual earnings per share so each time they've they beat so over the past year you see a five percent surp uh, surprise a 13 percent a 14 percent surprise 14 percent that's pretty impressive that they beat it ex the exact same amount twice in a row i mean i guess it's the same thing so it's not that surprising and then a two percent beat all right so um just just very general trend spotting right here you see that they do beat estimates okay and that's really what matters in this current market as far as earnings are concerned that's what i've uh, we've seen a lot of earnings recently that's my primary takeaway from earnings is as long as you exceed estimates and you're making progress fundamentally as a company which moderna obviously is then it's likely that you'll probably see some price appreciation in your stock okay so um again just following the trend this is a very easy trend to spot it would make sense that Moderna exceeds analyst expectations just because that's what they've done the past four quarters. Okay, and again, huge grant from huge grant from the U.S. government. They have FDA fast track. They have Operation Warp Speed. All that good stuff. They're Phase Three. Um, and again, I think Moderna is just waiting to break out. Like you can see it capitulating. Like it, it's. I, I highly doubt the fact that again it'll break below, below this line of support. Even if they disappoint on earnings, I doubt they'll break below the seventy dollar level. So worst case, I think there's definitely asymmetric potential here with Moderna, and you guys know I always preach asymmetric risks and as asymmetric positions. So I definitely think we could see a bounce off this line at, at like at the worst case scenario, seventy bucks, and might bounce off there, and then um, probably just bounce around here if they disappoint. But best case scenario, they oppress. Uh, I think we could come up. Uh, to, to the $90 region and uh, probably retest this middle line of resistance, maybe come up to $90, maybe bounce around there. And then again, if they really impress, uh, likely what will be the catalyst for for a move back up to this very top line of resistance, which would bring it up to like $120, $130 region would be the that, um, well, what the heck, the, the phase three, the, the phase three results, okay? So phase three results, come in the next month or so a couple months that could definitely take us to 120 plus dollars um, or even great earnings tomorrow if we can break above this line of resistance and start using it as support then i think we could keep uh, just uh, slowly organically climb our way back to this top line of resistance but i'm honestly confident that at some point um, over the coming months we will once again retest this top line of resistance okay so that said let's move on to anovia i'm just going to go real quick on these guys you guys i haven't even looked at these charts i am invested a little bit i have a small position in novia right now just because um just to kind of hedge across the sector. You guys know I always say that as well. Um, very small position in Novio. Honestly, not keeping track of it just because I'm waiting for them to drop some news just because I do believe uh, that they it, they definitely have the potential to drop some good news recently. So they Novio is below all like all lines of support that I've drawn in the past, which is a very bad sign. But Novio is also bouncing if we zoom in here. Um, it is just spending a lot of time around this area that it broke broke down to at the beginning of July after that huge rally that it had. So that's a good sign. Again, I it would it, it doesn't make sense to me personally for Inovio to to go lower than this. The the, the problem with this is you're seeing kind of uh you're seeing kind of a descending triangle pattern drawn here, which is uh, which is worrisome. So you can kind of see that playing out right now. That's usually bearish. But again, it just doesn't fundamentally make sense. And again, it, we will have to see, this is the important thing as well that I should have said earlier. If Moderna does well in, in skyrockets, we're gonna have to see, and I, I don't know this, we're just gonna have to find out. If Moderna impresses, then will that send, will that, uh, send the rest of the sector up or down? Okay, and that's, uh, again, you guys, I can't tell you that. My hunch is shoot, I really don't I can't confidently say anything because I really don't know we will have to see but keep an eye on that whether Moderna's if they if they do happen to impress um then will it Inovio, no vax vax are will these companies see a gain just because people are like 
okay, the vaccine sector is hot again. I want a piece of it and I want an underpriced asset that has the potential to go up. So you got to think about it psychologically. Obviously, obviously Moderna is fundamentally in the lead, but just from a psychological perspective, will people want a piece of the vaccine sector and will it put attention on the vaccine sector causing these other stocks again that are guilty by association to go up? Or will people like uh, be like Moderna is the obvious winner? I don't even want a piece of these stocks. Okay, so those are the two uh, trains of thought that you have to keep an eye on. And that is a reason that tomorrow for this sector is going to be a very, uh, it's going to be somewhat of a day of reckoning um, or, or just a, a very uh, det determinant day in that sense. Okay. So keep an eye out for that. Um, Novio again is looking, I can't see it going much lower than, than like in 19, 18, $19. But uh, again, we'll really have to see how tomorrow plays out. So Novax is floating around 157. Novak is still freaking following this upward trend line, which is crazy. So Novax is just holding on super strong. Um, again, you guys, I'm personally not invested in Novax right now just because I, I've been expecting them to pull back at least a little bit, but they are so, like this is probably the most textbook like following of, of, a, of an upward trend that I've ever seen just using these lines of support and resistance. So again, if you, you can just extend this, any of you can draw this on any charts that you have. So I'll just extend that. So uh, again, we'll have to see maybe if Moderna impresses, Novavax could tank. If it breaks down this uh, line of support, we will probably see a significant, I would I'd guess we will see a significant correction if it does break this line of support around this area where it sets uh, some highs in, in July, around $110. So if it does break this line, I, that's where I would expect to see a correction to. If it does uh, pull back to there, I would maybe uh, consider establishing a long position again, but I can see it, uh, shoot you guys, you, I, I, I'm not even gonna rant on this anymore. If Moderna, just keep an eye out. If Moderna impresses, you have to see if these goes up or down. If it goes down, um, I do expect it to come up to $110. If they happen to go up, I wouldn't be surprised to see Novavax retest this upper line um, of resistance and maybe hit the, like the $200 region uh, on the, the bright side. That's a 25%, that's over 25% gain, almost like a 30% gain. So uh, that is very optimistic, but uh, again, we'll have to see how tomorrow plays out. Let's wrap this up with Vaxart. So Vaxart is, uh, I mean, seeing a real hard time. So there's a few things that could happen here. If Vaxart just straight up from a technical perspective, you're seeing a, a significant decline in volume, which is, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's that's not, necessarily good but it also means that uh there's probably going to be less sellers too unless something very detrimental happens and vax starts a pretty small vax starts significantly smaller they're sitting at uh like 650 million dollar mark cap and uh, again they're significantly behind moderna in terms of vaccine which is a bummer they are still in operation warp speed so they have some stuff going for them but two things could happen here uh, for me to be bullish on Vaxart again, you guys remember I'm not investing in this currently. Um, for me to be bullish on Vaxart once again, it would have to break above this lowering, uh, this line of resistance that it's set here. So it is technically in a downtrend. It would have to break above at least $10 for me to get bullish again. Um, but worst case scenario here is you see kind of a head and shoulders pattern picking up. Okay, so you see your left shoulder, you see the head. If it starts to capitulate and just go sideways, um, that would worry me in the sense that we could see a full complete head and shoulders pattern play out and it could just completely crash back down to like three, two, three bucks. So, uh, I mean, that is very pessimistic. Um, on the optimistic side, again, if it does break above this, we could maybe see it test back to this region where it set a high back in, in late June. Um, so we will have to see how this plays out. Again, it's a small market cap stock. Volatility is to be expected with small market caps. So just keep your eye out. Be safe with these guys. And uh, again, it'll be very interesting to see how tomorrow plays out. Okay, you guys. So um, we'll wrap it up there. Please let me know what you guys are thinking about the sector. If you guys saw some saw some green today with Sorrento, what you guys are thinking about the rest of the sector. If um, if uh, you're invested in any of it, just let me know any concerns or, or intake or in, sorry insight that you have. Always love learning from you guys. Always love talking to you guys. So drop a comment below. Um, again, check out my complete portfolio daily newsletter. First link in the description. If you want to know my exact positions on these, how I'm trading these on a daily basis, um, exactly as it states. Complete breakdown of all call options, put options, stock positions, cryptocurrencies, um, exactly as it states. And uh, along with that, I do send out uh, a newsletter during market hours on every trading day, talking about the trades I made that day, rationalizing my thoughts, give you guys my general thoughts on the, the equity markets, all the markets overall, anything I'm excited about. So again, check it out if you're interested. If not, no worries. And as always, as always until next time, you guys, always remember, take action, make waves. Peace.